So if you wanna add some size and some strength to your biceps, we're gonna give you 10 exercises that can help you do just that. First exercise, it's gonna be a barbell cheat curl. The big thing here is you're gonna focus on the eccentric or the negative component of the rep. The concentric component is what you're doing when you're bringing the weight up. The eccentric is when you let it down. You're stronger on the eccentric. So you're gonna use a heavier weight. You're gonna cheat a little bit. You're gonna sway back. You're gonna bring the weight up to your chest. You're gonna slowly control it on the way down. Your real focus here is on the eccentric or the negative rep. It's gonna help you build some strength. Next on the list is going to be a banded barbell or dumbbell curl. So you can use a dumbbell. You're going to place this around your foot, loop it around the dumbbell. That adds progressive resistance as you bring the weight up towards your chest. It increases that muscle activation at the top where normal physiology would make it easier. So by adding a resistance band, you can increase that during the full duration of the rep. All right, so we're going to talk about a cable curl. One of the cool parts about using cables is the efficiency that can accompany it. You can change the weight rapidly or without having to go get different dumbbells or wait for different dumbbells or barbells. So you can increase and decrease if you want to do drop sets or pyramid sets. It also is uh, very fluid. So if you're someone who has maybe some joint pain, that might be a great option for you. Sometimes you get a little bit stale using barbells and dumbbells. A cable allows for some variability. So you can use different unique settings so that you don't feel like you're doing the exact same thing all the time with a barbell or a dumbbell. Keeps it different, keeps you excited and engaged in your training. This is gonna be a dumbbell isolation curl. You're really gonna try to focus on form, take all the sway out of it and really just isolate your bicep. You can do a couple of variations of this. You can do it standing, you can do it seated, whatever feels better to you is okay. The exercise is the same either way. So you're really gonna try to focus on keeping your elbow tight to your body and supinating or turning your palm up as if you were holding a bowl of soup. That supination is really important because that's actually one of the main functions of the bicep, supination. It does flex the elbow, but its main activation is supination. So on the isometric curl, you're gonna try to bring your pinky towards the ceiling and really supinate at the top. Trying not to sway or move back and forth a lot, keeping your elbow tight, bringing your pinky up at the top. So a variation of that, you can sit down, you'll see people do this in the gym, they'll stabilize their elbow at their, at their uh, quad, which is fine. Stabilize, bring that arm up, really trying to focus on bringing your pinky towards the ceiling. The hammer curls, concomitant muscle groups being utilized on this one. So you're gonna flex at the elbow, but with a neutral or sort of a, a mid grip, you're gonna activate the brachioradialis and some of the other muscles that help flex the elbow, add some thickness to your forearm and your upper arm. Main thing is keeping your hand in a neutral position and lifting heavy. Okay, so the next one is going to be an incline dumbbell curl. The important part about this is that you lengthen the muscle. One of the levers that you can utilize to improve your strength and your size is the length of the tissue that you're activating. And so in this case, when you sit on an incline bench, you're able to extend at the shoulder and extend at the elbow more so than you would be doing if you were standing with the traditional cambered bar or straight bar curl. And so as you lean back, you're able to stretch the bicep, the long head, which inserts in the shoulder joint itself, as well as the short head that attaches to the coracoid process. Both of those are going to get stretched out, making sure at the bottom that you keep a mildly soft elbow so that you don't put too much stretch on the distal biceps tendon. But stretching that back beyond your center of gravity or your spine allows you to stretch both of those and you finish the contraction at the top adding some of the length to that muscle, increases its ability to strengthen and to get bigger. Preacher curls, you're going to stabilize your elbow and as you fully extend, you wanna focus on keeping just a little bit of flexion at the bottom. You don't want to hyperextend because when you hyperextend your elbow in a fixed plane, with a load, with weight, it puts your biceps tendon in a very vulnerable position. You don't want to rupture that. You're going to see videos all over the internet of people doing a very strict preacher curl and popping their distal biceps tendons. And then they have to come see us in clinic and we have to repair it. You don't want that. So when you're letting the weight down at the bottom, keep your elbow just a little bit soft, not fully extended, so that you don't put too much pressure on that tendon. The tendons are not very elastic. The elasticity and the flexibility comes from the muscle itself. So when it is fully lengthened and you put all that tension on the tendon, there's no elasticity there and that stress is too much for it and that's what causes it to rupture or pop loose from the bone and those require surgical intervention to repair. So, word of caution, cautionary discretion with range of motion and with weight on the preacher curl and any other bicep activation where you're fully extending at the elbow. So spider curls, bit of a unique variation. 
not everybody has seen these, but all you really need is an incline bench. You're gonna lean against it, and as you do so, you're gonna stretch your arms out. It kind of works like an isolation curl in that way, but you also gain just a little bit of forward flexion at the shoulder. You have to remember that the bicep has two heads. That's why it's named bicep. The long head inserts into the shoulder, into the labrum, into the joint itself. The short head inserts onto a prominent structure of the front of the scapula, called the coracoid process. And it aids in just a mild amount of forward flexion of the shoulder. So when you jump on and do a spider curl, you can actually do just a little bit of forward flexion and activate that shorter head of the bicep. Along with lengthening at the bottom, it's a great exercise that you may not have tried, so give it a whirl. Next is gonna be a weighted chin-up. Now, a lot of people will consider a chin-up to be a back exercise, but if you focus on elbow contraction or elbow flexion, you can really engage your biceps. Quick tip, you can use one of these weighted belts and put some resistance on with this. If it's too hard to use with extra weight, you can use a band to assist you so that you can take some of the weight off, just so you can make sure you get functional reps. Zotman curl. You're gonna combine pronation and supination for a combined comprehensive development of your arm. It's gonna include the biceps, of course, but also those forearm muscles that stabilize and move your wrist. So the big thing here, pronate and supinate. All right, guys, there you go. 10 exercises to help you build some size and some strength to your biceps. If you like this content, if you wanna get more of it, Check out Jim Reapers or follow me on social media. You can find me on Instagram. Remember, big brains are important. Big biceps are important too.